Turner would like to welcome you to our workplace. We think of our workplace as our house, and in our house, we foster a caring environment. We want every person at Turner and every person who steps onto a Turner site to truly believe that they are contributing to and have a sense of belonging to something extraordinary. We are focused on maintaining and sustaining the right environment where people feel included, engaged, empowered, and connected. Welcome. Turner is working very hard to create the right environment on our projects, one that is inclusive, respectful, and welcoming to everyone. Our industry is comprised of workers from a variety of diverse groups, such as different trades, races, genders, identities, religions, or political affiliations, and we want everyone to feel comfortable coming to work at a Turner site. We expect each and every person to do their part to maintain a working environment which encourages mutual respect and supportive relationships and is free from all forms of harassment and discrimination. We are providing this video to share information on what we consider to be bias-motivated events, graffiti and hate symbols, and why they are unacceptable on Turner Project sites. We need everyone to be part of the solution, speak up, and to be an advocate for change. We need everyone to take a stance against bias and hate, so that we can create a workplace that welcomes all, and ultimately changes our industry. Turner has zero tolerance for harassment of any kind, including harassment on the basis of race, sex, gender identity, sexual orientation, pregnancy, age, religion, disability, veteran status, or any other protected status, nor will we accept any intent to harm a person or the job site. Turner does not tolerate destruction, vandalism, graffiti, or defacement of property in our workplace. Damage to property, including graffiti, is a crime. Zero tolerance means no hate or racist symbols displayed on work sites, on clothing, or on personal vehicles, while parked in project or worksite designated parking. No graffiti of any kind. If you have tattoos that are considered racist, sexist, hate-based, gang-related or offensive, you must cover them up while on Turner work sites. Yes, this applies in the summer. This is your responsibility. No racist jokes, derogatory terms, or offensive language toward other groups and races. Speak up. If you see something, say something. All incidents will be investigated, and responsible parties will be held accountable. The goal is to eliminate these incidents and behaviors on our projects. We must all hold ourselves and others accountable to ensure that our workplace is free from harassment, hate, and bigotry of any kind. Even if you do not mean any harm or to offend anyone, you must consider what others might reasonably perceive as offensive or hostile. In other words, something that would not offend you is not a measure of acceptable behavior. Some conduct, even when not intended to be offensive or harassing, can be perceived by a co-worker as offensive and may be in violation of their right to work in a dignified environment, as well as in violation of the law. In certain cases, bias-motivated events rise to the level of a hate crime or a criminal offense. All events will be fully investigated, and Turner will cooperate in the prosecution of violations of the law. Additionally, Turner may take further action contractually. Bias and hate can come across in many ways. It could be through words, actions, or symbols depicting hate, like a noose, confederate flag, or swastika. Other examples include the issuance of derogatory leaflets, threats, acts of violence, name-calling, offensive jokes, hand signs, improper stickers, unsanctioned non-work-related posters, etc. Turner expressly prohibits harassment or bias in any form or manner. We use the Anti-Defamation League and other credible sources to verify symbols when we find them, so that we are guided in our actions.
all graffiti is defacement of property and vandalism. There will be swift action if an incident occurs. Some examples include images drawn, sprayed, carved, scratched, or etched. Remember, as we have stated before, in certain cases, bias-motivated events rise to the level of a hate crime or a criminal offense. All events will be fully investigated, and Turner will cooperate in the prosecution of violations of the law. Additionally, Turner may take further action contractually. Graffiti and hate symbols are often found in temporary facilities, such as Porta Johns, built on site improvements, pedestrian covered walkways, scaffolds, storage trailers, job trailers, side fences, etc. Graffiti and hate symbols are also often found in less frequently traveled locations, such as machine rooms, stairwells, and closets. Other locations of graffiti and hate symbols include hard hats, toolboxes, tattoos, and items on motor vehicles, such as bumper stickers, vanity plates, and license plate frames. This is our work environment, and as a collective work group, we want to keep it clean, respectful, and inclusive. Remember, no graffiti of any kind is allowed on our job sites. To help create and maintain an inclusive and respectful environment, we expect everyone to follow these principles in our workplace. Demonstrate a zero tolerance for bias and hate. Care for and support individuals and groups that are different than you. Speak up if you witness graffiti or a bias-motivated event. Continue to educate yourself and encourage others to do so also. We will maintain transparency in reporting and follow up with an investigation and discussion. If you are witnessing an event as it is occurring, please consider one of the five Ds of bystander intervention. Direct. Assess your safety first. Speak up about the harassment. Remain calm, yet be confident and assertive. Delegate. Locate another person to intervene. Distract. Divert the attention of the aggressor to interrupt the situation. Discuss. After the incident, check in with the person who was harassed. Document. Document the situation and share it with your supervisor. When you discover an incident has occurred, do not disturb the area or remove any evidence. Any individual who has knowledge of a bias-motivated event or potential hate crime must take one of the following four actions. Say something to your supervisor or crew leader. Say something to any Turner employee on site. Call Turner's independently operated confidential hotline at 888-738-1924 or send an email to compliance at tcco.com. Be assured that immediate action will be taken, regardless of where the bias-motivated event or potential hate crime occurred. When these events occur, your cooperation in any investigation is expected. We need everyone to be part of the solution and an advocate for change. We need everyone to be anti-racist and take a stance against hate so that we can change our industry. What can you do? Be an advocate for others. Educate yourself. Read books, watch videos, or attend lectures. Build genuine relationships with people who have different experiences than yours. Speak up against hate when you see it. We rely on our full project team, including our employees, partners, and most importantly, you, our trade contractors, to work as a team to build our jobs and accomplish our goals. We must work together to actively maintain an environment that is free from intimidation, hostility, or other offenses.
Please know that Turner's Zero Tolerance policy stems from our belief in actively caring for each and every person on our job sites and in our offices. Thank you for actively caring for the safety, physical health, mental health, and well-being of yourself and your co-workers. Together, we will make every Turner project a welcoming place for all. Turner's safety culture is reflected in the principle of building life, living injury-free every day. With an expectation that all projects provide the safest workplace possible for our employees, trade partners, clients, and members of the communities in which we work. Our guiding principles are injuries are preventable. We will coach and practice safe behavior to live injury-free every day. We will engage and look out for each other to properly plan work. We will perform a task only if it is safe. We will speak up and stop work if there is an unsafe condition, action, or safer way to perform a task. We want everyone to feel empowered and to take ownership in safety planning and activities. Be proactive about your own safety and the safety of others. If you see something that is unsafe, say something. As part of our commitment to you, we want you to know that you are never expected to work in an unsafe situation. You have the right to stop work if you feel unsafe or if you see something unsafe. Additionally, we ask that you help look out for the safety of every other worker and commit along with us to taking action when you see a fellow worker at risk. Together, we can make every project injury-free. All visitors must sign a visitor release at the project site office. All visitors must be escorted while on site and must adhere to the Turner Project Safety Program and be 18 years of age or older. No pets or animals are allowed on site. All trade partner vehicles within the project site fence, including but not limited to transportation and construction equipment, delivery trucks, and personal or company trucks, shall not idle. The only allowable exceptions to the standard are as follows. A. Ambient air temperature exceeds 85 degrees Fahrenheit or falls below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or as defined by local or regional temperature limits, whichever is stricter. B. Engine idling is required for the function of auxiliary equipment, i.e. cranes, concrete pumps, etc. A fluent interpreter must be provided and on-site for any crew that has one or more non-English speaking workers. Results of a minimum 10-panel drug test current within the last year is required to attend orientation. Additional testing may also be required if there is an incident, cause, or suspicion. If you test positive or refuse to test, you will not be allowed on-site. Turner offices and projects are tobacco-free. This includes e-cigs, vaping, and all forms of tobacco. Turner may elect to establish a tobacco zone outside the project. If you are issued a badge, keep it on your person at all times when on site. All workers are expected to participate in the morning safety huddle and stretch and flex to develop a safe plan of work for the shift. Throughout the work shift, if any new tasks or changes come up that weren't planned at the beginning of the shift, work must pause and the plan must be revised. All personnel are empowered and encouraged to stop unsafe acts and identify, correct, and report any unsafe conditions. Headphones, ear pods, or radios of any kind are prohibited, as use of these devices can impair your ability to hear emergency signals or warnings. Do not walk or drive while talking on the phone or walkie-talkie. To the maximum extent permitted by applicable law, the possession on company premises or while on duty of firearms, clubs, explosives, 
or other weapons that could be used to cause harm to personnel or property other than that used to perform specific construction activities is not permitted. This would include Turner projects and client-owned buildings and facilities we work in, project-provided parking areas, and while in the performance of work duties. All OSHA regulations will be strictly enforced. In some cases, Turner's site safety policies may exceed OSHA regulations. Examples include, but are not limited to, Turner's six-foot fall rule, ladder's last policy, tie off in scissor lifts, and nothing hits the ground policy. Turner has a three strikes disciplinary policy regarding safety violations. The first is a verbal warning. The second is a written warning with mandatory retraining and reorientation. A third violation will result in termination from the project and removal from the site. Our overall goal is to provide safety coaching and retraining when appropriate. Turner reserves the right to have removed any employee of the company for serious, repeat, willful, or egregious violations, skipping the three-strike process listed above. Turner may also require outside third-party training relative to the safety infraction for any employee to be able to return to the site. Supervisors and crew leads may also be held accountable for the actions of their employees. Any injury, illness, or near misses should be reported immediately to your foreman, supervisor, or crew lead who will notify Turner after stabilizing any injuries or unsafe conditions. All incidents are investigated for the purpose of identifying the cause and preventing future incidents. At Turner, no incident, injury, or any level of harm is ever acceptable. Accidents are usually the result of poor or no planning. Participating in safety huddles, committees, and other safety-related events is something we should all do willingly. By identifying the potential risk your team could encounter and helping to plan the work and working the plan, you are helping to create a safe work environment for yourself and everyone around you. Everyone is encouraged to ask questions and report actual and perceived hazardous conditions to site supervision. Perceived hazardous conditions may require further clarification and hazard assessment. If you have any questions or concerns, please ask site supervision for assistance. Falls are a leading cause of death and disability in construction. Turner requires pre-planning to identify any risks and provide proper fall prevention for anyone working six feet or higher. Each contractor who will have an employee exposed to a fall greater than six feet must submit a written fall prevention plan prior to beginning work. Each employee must be trained in the use of fall prevention equipment and participate in the safety pre-planning process. All conditions that will require personal fall protection shall be discussed and documented in the daily pre-task plan and reviewed in the field by the crew leader. A personal fall arrest system, PFAS, comprised of a full body harness, two lanyards with double locking snap hooks or retractables, or a guardrail system must be in place to protect all employees working above six feet. Safety monitors are never allowed as a means of fall prevention. All scaffolding systems must be erected under the supervision of an on-site competent inspector using 100% fall prevention during erection and dismantling. 
Scaffolding must be inspected daily prior to use by an inspector who will tag and date the scaffolding as compliant and safe, or red tag it as non-compliant or out of service. Never use a scaffold that is out of service. Do not use cross bracing as a ladder. Cross bracing cannot be used as an alternative to top or mid rails. Frame and system type scaffolds, including but not limited to masonry and tube and coupler, must be accessed via scaffold stair attachments. Where space does not permit the use of a stair, alternate means of access egress may be utilized, including ladder systems, when a Turner ladder permit is issued. Mobile scaffolds can only be used by trained authorized operators. Guardrails are required on mobile scaffolds when the work platform is four feet or higher. Wheel locks are required when the scaffold is in use. On typical Baker scaffolds, outriggers are required at five feet or a two to one ratio of the base dimension of the scaffold. Be sure to evaluate the overturn potential when accessing Baker scaffolds and discuss the need for outriggers again when going above five feet. Surfing with Baker scaffolds is strictly prohibited. Any job specific scaffolding requirements will be reviewed during safety huddles and job briefings. Turner's Ladders Last policy states that ladders on Turner construction projects should be allowed only if other options are not feasible. Lifts and scaffolding are always the preferred method whenever possible. Temporary stair towers or prefabricated stairs should be used to access different building levels. If it is determined that a ladder is the only means of performing a job, a ladder permit must be submitted prior to starting work. A ladder cannot be on site without a current permit and safety checklist. Permitted ladders must be inspected daily at the start of each shift by a qualified person. Metal, wood, or job-built ladders cannot be used and must be removed from the job site. When working at a height greater than four feet or when three points of contact cannot be maintained, 100% fall prevention is required. Never use a ladder when it's folded. Never stand on the top two steps of a standard A-frame ladder. And never store material or tools on a ladder. Any job-specific ladder requirements will be covered during safety huddles and job briefings. Only trained certified operators may use mobile elevated work platforms, and they must be inspected and approved for use by a competent company representative or supplier. An inspection checklist to check for leaks or other damage must be completed on every shift prior to use and kept with the lift. All lifts must have dual action controls, guards, and anti-crush technology. 100% tie-off is required on scissor lifts for fall restraint and boom lifts or any lift with tie-off points. Lifts must also have full guardrail protection around the work platform and a gate or chain. Never stand on the rails or the tow board and always use a spotter when moving a scissors lift in the elevated position. All scissor lifts and boom lifts must have an approved shroud or guard over the joystick or a timeout feature on the lift lower drive selector. This disables those functions after several seconds of inactivity. If your lift platforms are missing these attachments, do not use the lift. Contact Turner so the proper equipment can be brought on site. Anyone operating equipment must be properly trained and certified you will be briefed on the designated equipment and pedestrian travel routes on site. 
A documented equipment inspection is required for each piece of equipment on every shift prior to use. The manufacturer's operating instructions must be followed for all equipment and tools used on this project. Seatbelt use is mandatory for all drivers and occupants, and you must obey all site speed limits. Functioning backup alarms and horns are required on all heavy equipment, and a spotter must be used when backing up any vehicle or equipment. The use of cell phones is prohibited while the machine or vehicle is in motion. When on foot or driving other equipment into an area, do not enter until you have made eye contact and get an OK from the operator. Delivery drivers are responsible for securing and unsecuring loads for both loading and unloading. Access to truck beds must use a stair system. Do not climb on tires or jump off truck beds. When offloading trucks with forks or a crane, no person should be on the truck bed or around the truck after rigging. Set up a safe zone around the truck with tape or barricades and use a spotter to keep people away. Loading and unloading on public roadways requires approval from the DOT, a maintenance of traffic plan, MOT, or equivalent for local legislation, and a train traffic control flagger. Signs and barricades are temporary control measures for blocking off hazardous or restricted work areas. They should be removed as soon as the activity is completed or the hazardous situation has been corrected. When setting up signs and barricades, do not relocate, destroy, or reposition any wayfinding signs such as exit, muster point, fire extinguisher, or other directional or instructional signage. Barricades are designed to prevent people from entering an area from any direction using yellow caution tape for caution or red danger tape to warn against hazardous or dangerous conditions. Hard barricades and signage are required for swing radius and exclusion zones. Signs should identify the hazard and provide contact information for the controlling contractor. Only authorized personnel performing the actual work are allowed inside the barricade tape unless you have a prior permission to enter the area. Turner's minimum PPE requirements include ANSI Type 2 or EN12492 approved safety helmets with an integrated four-point chin strap tightly attached and secured, safety rated glasses with side shields, cut level four gloves, high visual shirt vest or jacket, and sturdy work boots. This minimum PPE is to be worn at all times, gate to gate, except when in designated break or meeting areas. Reflective outerwear is required when working near roadways and near heavy equipment. No cowboy hard hats, metal hard hats, or bump caps are permitted. Long pants are required and shirts must have at least a 4-inch sleeve. Safety-toed boots are mandatory for masons, drillers, pile drivers, steel erectors, and riggers. Task-specific PPE such as dust masks, respirators, and hearing protection may also be required. Appropriate arm protection, such as Kevlar or Dyneema sleeves, are required during operations where the arms are exposed to cut hazards. Examples of these activities are working around metal studs and pull boxes, tight spaces between wall studs or above the ceiling, and all demo activities. Task above shoulder will require goggles or spoggles. 
Demolition, overhead drilling, and other tasks that produce flying debris will require goggles or spoggles and a hard hat integrated polycarbonate face shield. Hand and power tool misuse is a leading cause of injuries, including severe lacerations. Safe tool use requires proper setup, stable work surfaces, and safe working conditions. Always use the right tool for the right job and take time to properly set up your work area. Setup is key, and having benches or tripod stands to secure the work is a must to allow proper execution with band and circular saws. Power tools require proper training and proper PPE. They must be inspected prior to use to assure that all guards, handles, and safeties are working properly. Hand tools should be inspected before each use and must be properly maintained and stored. Cut away from your body and keep hands and arms out of the direction of the cut. Tether your tools while working near the perimeter of the building, leading edges, shafts, and other situations where tools could be accidentally dropped. Tools that create dust will require HEPA vacuums, water spray, or other methods of capturing and containing dust. Cordless power tools are recommended to reduce cord management and trip hazards on site. Hazardous energy is any source of electrical, mechanical, pneumatic, thermal, chemical, or other energy source with enough force to produce injury if released. Electrical work shall only be conducted on de-energized systems that have been locked out and tagged. Non-electrical work on energized systems requires the stored energy to be dissipated or restrained. A meeting with your lockout tagout administrator to review the proper lockout tagout procedures must take place prior to any activity involving hazardous energy sources. All electrical work shall be in accordance with the National Electric Code, ANSI, and regulatory standards. Inspect all cords and welding leads daily. Damaged electrical cords must be removed from service immediately. 100% GFCI protection is also required. All panels, boxes, switches, and receptacles containing live wires must have a hard cover. Electrical room doors and panels must also be secured or locked at all times. Never work on live electrical panels or parts without prior approval from Turner. Hot work includes any tasks that generate sparks or flames and requires additional PPE as noted on the hot work permit. An approved plan and hot work permit are required before hot work can begin. Hot work permits are limited to the time, date, task, and area specified on the permit, and the approved permit must be posted in the hot work area. All areas adjacent to and below a hot work area must be checked for any combustible materials, openings, or other trade activity prior to starting. A minimum 20-pound ABC dry chemical fire extinguisher is required for a hot work area, and flashback arresters must be located on the torch head and cylinders. A fire watch must be posted anywhere sparks could fall and must remain in the hot work area at least 30 minutes after any hot work activity has ended. Nothing hits the ground refers to the importance of keeping the job site organized, productive, safe, and professionally maintained. Clean as you go to help eliminate slips, trips, and falls. Neatly store unused materials and dispose of scrap or waste immediately. Use mobile material handling devices to reduce manual handling whenever possible. 
This will cut down on soft tissue injuries and cumulative trauma disorders such as back injuries and muscle spasms. Also, use benches and raised work surfaces to avoid working on the floor and cordless tools to eliminate trip hazards. When corded tools are necessary, cords must be elevated using a non-conductive device to prevent damage and trip hazards. Cords should be suspended a minimum eight feet from the work surface in hallways, corridors, stairways, and exit areas. Cranes can be operated by licensed designated persons who must submit operator certification, NCCCO or NCCER. Some state and local licensing requirements may exceed NCCCO or NCCER requirements and must be followed. You must also be properly trained, certified, and authorized to signal a crane. Each rigger and signal person must be qualified and provide proof of training to Turner Construction. A rigging plan must be developed using only qualified riggers. In addition to cranes, rigging requirements also apply to any hoisting device or equipment. Rigging must be inspected prior to use and any defective rigging removed. Each crane requires a lift plan and a pre-lift meeting with Turner, the trade partner and supplier. Documented daily crane inspections are required prior to crane operation and manufacturer's capacity rating tags must be attached and legible for rigging equipment. Cranes must set up and travel in designated areas only. Any lift that exceeds 75% of the rated capacity or involves two cranes or lifting over an occupied building will be considered critical and requires a critical lift plan. Always maintain awareness of overhead loads, listen for horns or other signals, and never stand or walk under an elevated load. Always be aware of your surroundings and the swing path, which should be flagged off. Check for any loose materials such as rocks in the pallet planks and be sure that no loose materials are being lifted. Other site-specific instructions may be given in the pre-lift meeting. A competent person must be identified and be on site during all excavation work and must complete a shift inspection prior to entry by any personnel. Before you dig or drill, you must complete a Turner Surface Penetration Request Form and notify your utility locator service. Utility locates must be performed, documented, and maintained. Uniform color codes are used to indicate the proposed excavation site, temporary surveys, and the type of digging to be performed, including electric power lines, cables, conduit, and lighting cables, gas, oil, steam, petroleum, or gaseous materials, communication, alarm, or signal lines, cables, or conduit, potable water, or reclaimed water, irrigation, and slurry lines. Here are some other excavation requirements you must know and follow. Any excavation greater than four feet must be sloped, shielded, or benched properly. You cannot bench type C soil. Access via ramp or stairs must be provided within a maximum distance of 25 feet for trench excavations. Any excavation, including trenches, must be barricaded with orange fence or equivalent regardless of depth and be six feet back from the edge. Fall protection is required at the top of excavations greater than six feet deep when the slope is less than 45 degrees. Each worker that may be potentially exposed to hazardous chemicals must be advised of those potential hazards and how to guard against them. You must also verify that you have been properly trained by your employer on hazard communication. Turner reserves the right to approve any chemical brought on site. You must provide Turner a safety data sheet for any chemical you bring onto the project. 
Chemical inventory lists and safety data sheets are located in the Turner office. This is not limited to liquids and can include powders and solids such as welding rods and treated wood. Storage areas must also be approved. Turner will also coordinate the sharing of safety data sheets, SDS, between contractors. Your supervisor or crew lead will review any site-specific safety data sheets that will be used on your work sites. It is important that your supervisor keep a copy of SDS nearby for material that you are working with on site. Turner Construction is an ISO certified company. The ISO, International Organization for Standardization, is an independent organization that develops and manages standards to measure the quality, safety, and sustainability of a company's offered services. To be ISO certified means that Turner Construction is regularly audited by independent third parties and that we have demonstrated that our SMS, Safety Management System, and our EMS, Environmental Management System, and the process and procedures of our business activities work efficiently and effectively and conform to the requirements of the standards set by the International Organization for Standardization. ISO 45001 is the standard for occupational health and safety at work with a goal to reduce workplace injuries, illnesses, and fatalities. ISO 14001 is the standard for environment management with a goal to identify and control the environmental impact that our business activities could potentially have in the communities in which we work. Both standards place a greater focus on risk management by proactively identifying sources and or situations and controlling the hazards identified that could have the potential to cause harm and or pollution respectively. By maintaining both standards, Turner Construction demonstrates its commitment and dedication to continuous improvement to the health and safety of workers within our workplaces and our environmental performance through more efficient use of resources and reduction of waste. Our management systems expect that senior leadership and management are responsible for promoting a culture of safety and are expected to take personal responsibility for safety outcomes and accountability for worker health and wellness. Senior leadership and management are responsible for promoting environmental performance and are expected to take personal responsibility to ensure we achieve our intended environment objectives. Workers are asked and encouraged to participate so that they are involved in establishing safety and environmental programs, evaluating effectiveness, and identifying ideas for continuous improvement. Report all incidents, spills, discharges, contamination, injuries, near misses, and other health, safety, and environmental concerns. Participate in inspections and incident investigations and provide input on corrective actions. Participate in identifying training needs and evaluating the effectiveness of training programs. We have an ongoing commitment to making our workplace a safe and welcoming environment for everyone. When workers feel valued and respected, they can operate at their best and be more productive team members. To foster respect among coworkers, there must be empathy on the job site. Empathy in the workplace is born out of a willingness to spend time getting to know our coworkers, accepting those who are different from us, and fostering a genuine concern for the difficulties others may be experiencing. Can you remember a time when your attitude towards someone changed in a positive way? simply because you took the time to talk with them, listen to them, or walk in their shoes? That kind of empathy enables us to better understand people and develop stronger, more productive relationships. Being genuinely concerned and supportive of others promotes both physical and mental health among coworkers and helps create a work environment where people feel comfortable, valued, and safe. Empathy is allowing yourself to understand a person's position and what they're going through. 
Well, one of the ways that that I demonstrated is by uh, learning people's names. Uh, people like when you remember their names. Just getting together with the other crafts and saying, hey, is this going to cause an issue in the future for you? And by practicing empathy with other crafts, this job moves along so much better, so much smoother. And, you know, we get a lot more accomplished by having that teamwork. And not that teamwork and what holds that everything together is empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand the feelings of another person as if you have experienced them yourself. Sympathy or feeling sorry for people is not genuine empathy. Empathy is both knowing and caring about the struggles others may be experiencing. You can deepen relationships with coworkers by simply listening or asking for their side of the story, sharing your views, and demonstrating a genuine concern for the feelings they have. Also, realize that there are outside influences that affect everyone's life. A person who has a nice breakfast and heads off to work has an entirely different start to their day than a single parent or caregiver who has much more to deal with before their workday begins. It's nice to work in an environment where uh, your preferences or your feelings matter to other people. Uh, it's to make people feel wanted, needed, uh, safe, cared for, and, and connected. Let's consider the benefits of empathy and respect on the job site. It allows us to be ourselves and be accepted for who we are, make mistakes and learn from them, ask questions and challenge ideas, give and receive feedback, take risks, have the full support of the team, and speak up if we see harassment, hazing, or intimidation. We learn empathy by doing. Try picking one empathetic action that you can practice now. Become more aware of how recent events are affecting others. Jumpstart a connection with others by asking questions, sharing stories, and finding common ground. Try being more understanding and less judgmental of others. Speak up and intervene if you witness disrespectful behavior towards someone. If you make a mistake, admit it and learn from it. Also learn from others' mistakes. I believe when you're when you're generally respected, you feel good about who you are, what you believe in. Just respecting other people and um, their position, their feelings. Uh, I would say empathy. If you address workers in a way that disrespects them, for you can bet your life that most of the day they're going to be thinking about that. Showing respect and empathy for others starts with you. Own it and be a model for others to see. We can all play a part in creating an optimal work environment for everyone by building a supportive, productive atmosphere of respect and understanding within our own teams. We must create the right environment so that people can be at their best, be authentic, and be treated with respect and dignity. Safety should be part of every decision we make and every action we take. Turner truly cares about your well-being and wants you to return home each day injury-free. We must communicate any unsafe working conditions or problems with our coworkers, supervisors, and other trade workers. Daily observation and feedback are essential to a safe working environment. If you see something that has changed from the pre-task plan, stop and ask. Everyone is authorized to stop work to address any unsafe working condition. We build safe work habits through real-time feedback and by coaching safety. We also use the buddy system to pair up coworkers to help ensure the safety of others as well as our own. All workers are expected to play an active role in creating a safe work environment. By actively caring for each other, communicating, and coaching safe work habits, we can achieve our goal to live injury-free every day.
Let's be relentless and keep each other accountable by making sure we pre-plan and discuss risk every day and that we continue to actively care. Thank you for your support and help maintaining a workplace that promotes the building life culture. Together, we will continue to improve our performance and make our projects the safest possible.